Today, I'm going to be talking about bill of materials, pretty much production's ingredient list. So what is a bill of materials? Well, frequently they're pronounced BOM, bill of materials, the acronym BOM. If you're new to industry and you hear people talking about bombs, it might freak you out a little bit, but that's what they're talking about, bills of materials. So a bomb is the list of raw materials, sub-assemblies, or parts that are sold through a supplier, and all the quantities of those things needed to make a product. It's often tied to production ordering. Um, purchasing needs to know if you need a certain amount of parts, they can get that off of the bomb. So for example, if they know you're producing a thousand parts this month, and that part uses four type Y screws, then they know, hey, we need 4,000 type Y screws. A bomb may not be a technical drawing of a part, but it's very useful, and it's kind of like an add-on to the part. Think of it as a grocery list to make your part. Here's an example of a bill of materials I found online. And this example looks like they're building a bridge. You see on the left-hand column there, you have a description column that talks about each of the parts. So they've got plywood, they've got square dowels, they've got wood glue. That makes sense. If you're building a bridge, you're going to need those things. Quantity, so how much of each. Unit, that's interesting. That's important to note because if you're just talking about direct parts, sometimes you're like, yeah, unit would just be a piece of it. But when you're talking about things like glue, it could be milliliters, liters, gallons, what have you. In this example, too, they also have unit cost and shipping cost. So this would probably be a bill of materials that purchasing would use, a purchasing bomb. All right, so earlier I talked about, hey, that might be a purchasing bomb. Well, there are different types of bombs. So an engineering bill of materials used for design. So the design engineers have specific names for the components. You're going to see that in their bill of materials. Heading over to sales, a sales bomb would be used for purchasing. So sales, for example, may care more about the standard part names or raw materials that help make the components. They might not care about what the components are eventually called. Then you also have a manufacturing bomb. So this is used for manufacturing. It could be that production would like a more specific information on the components, you know, what kind of machines they need, things like that. I'll end my video with a few more bits of information about bills of materials. They're hierarchical in nature, so they generally start with the finished product on top and work their way down from there, eventually getting down to screws, nuts, bolts, all that fun stuff. Bombs that describe subassemblies are typically called modular bombs, so they're just part of the whole. Apparently, there's something called configurable bombs. I don't have much experience with this myself, but it makes sense. So it uses modular bombs and allows the manufacturer to configure different bombs based on the specific part needed. So this would be very useful for sales. Uh, for example, I worked at a place, their big selling point was they had a core product, but they could sell you a thousand variations. So I would imagine the purchasing department, the sales department at that organization probably had a lot of configurable bombs. And I would guess those files themselves are very easy to copy and paste, a cookie cutter approach. Literally the definition of modular. So that makes sense, it's very practical. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or any of my other videos, please subscribe. I'm gonna try to do a video a day this summer and I'm gonna break down a lot of technical concepts, but then also a lot of practical concepts that you can't necessarily learn from a textbook. I hope you now know more about bills of materials.